Hey. Yeah, good morning. Hey. Happy holiday time, man. Yeah. yeah. New glad. digs, obviously, yeah. first and foremost. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wanted to make an awesome studio so we could talk more and do just more engaging videos to get people really healthy. So let's get rocking. So truth be told, I was uh, delayed a little. Uh, and usually... Isn't that, isn't that the story of the holidays? Well, <laughs> I'm not going to get into it. It wasn't my fault. Um, other cars were in the way. There I get you. Um, but I'm here and you probably already got started with like some sort of great snack. You always have a good snack. I did. You missed uh, breakfast. I'll oh, we'll just well, say that out loud. I had breakfast at home, <laughs> but I see some things over here. Yeah. Uh, chia seeds seem to be the main ingredient here. Yeah. What do you, what do you got? Yeah. So what, I thought it'd always be good to start out with like a, a recipe that I just I love during this time of year. So, you know, obviously as we switch from like hot summer heat to you know cold times, what we eat kind of tends to change. And one of the things that I love to think on is, you know, when it gets cold outside and I get around the holidays, this is when I sort of shift my diet to more of a healthy fat based diet and really start to get rid of a lot of the carbohydrates that I might've been using more of when I was, you know, running a lot outside, training more, doing lots of more like cardio things. So one of my favorite breakfasts ever to use, simple, it's like four ingredients, chia seeds. Please tell me I can add pumpkin to this. That's oh, basically all you, I need to do. You know. totally could. So okay, the flavor so you can you can variate. So what I love making, and I have a couple of the ingredients here, not all of them, but what I love making using this stuff is a chia seed pudding. And the reason I love it obviously is because chia seeds are absolutely packed with healthy fats, omega-3s. They're packed with fiber and they're packed with protein. Threes are awesome. Sixes, not so much. Bad, right. Yeah. So these are packed with anti-inflammatory fats. And the great thing is whenever you put them in a drink, like so with this, you can use water with chia or you can use my favorite, which is a canned coconut milk. It literally turns it and congeals it into an awesome like pudding. So I use coconut milk, chia seeds, either the vanilla or bone broth protein powder. And that gives it a nice kick in protein with lots of healthy fats. So it's a perfectly natural ketogenic breakfast that satiates you, makes you feel full. So you're doing like blender and then put it into a bowl? No, not even blender, just a spoon. Okay, gotcha. So literally you just you just pour the coconut milk into a bowl, you add chia seeds, you add protein, you whisk it. And then here you can add, um, if you want to add like vanilla extract or pumpkin extract or extra cacao to make it extra chocolatey, you can add other flavors to it and get whatever combination that you want. So it's a beautiful, Sounds easy good. to make breakfast that anyone can do and it's unbelievably healthy for you. So this is my go-to during the holidays because sometimes I'm going to friends' houses or family's houses, and sometimes I bring healthy stuff, but sometimes I don't, we're busy. But I know if I control my breakfast, if I control my first meal of the day, whenever that is, this helps set me up for a healthy rest of the day. And it's like the research that shows that making your bed gives you a better day. Controlling the first food that goes into your mouth, for me at least, helps me control the rest of the way yeah, the day goes. Because like, now, like. now, now I'm more on it, if that makes sense. Cool. So, I know we're going into the holidays, and we kind of get faced with all of these problems, you know, um, let's just say this, holidays come with eating too much. Yeah, there's a contest right? on how many houses you visit <laughs> and how many meals you have. Yeah, yeah. I, I read a stat the other day that said that the average Christmas intake on, on a Christmas day is 7,000 calories. They, they research wow, adults, that's, the that's average. <laughs> that's like three times the daily intake of, of, of food, you know. Um, I think we're not moving as much as well. We get that cold paralysis that starts to happen, especially around the holidays. You know, we're yeah, sitting around walking. watching football. Yeah, it's just blah. Sugary cocktails that those who imbibe might be leaning towards. Probably. So you get the calories not only from the alcohol, which is a, an empty calorie, you know. Yeah, it's the social. But you get all the, all the other the stuff. The social aspect, you're, you go visit friends and family and it's, okay, what do you want to drink? I tend to lean towards, you know, maybe like a, a hard kombucha. But only one. <laughs> you smart man. Because, you know, the fermented uh, tea can, you know, get things moving, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, one of the things that I have a lot of our patients deal with is sleeping issues. And if you've ever worn like a Fitbit or a sleep tracker, alcohol absolutely crushes sleep. I mean, if you want to have the fastest way to not sleep soundly, it's drink a lot of alcohol before you go to bed. It's unbelievable. Uh, a surgeon friend of mine that I play basketball with has a, he's a big whoop fan. Okay. And he says the data he's, he's gotten from that is just incredible. And I said, give me one. And he said, alcohol kicks you in the butt yep. with recovery. Yep. Absolutely. It, I've, I've got a lot of friends with the whoop and I've, I've got a, an aura and you absolutely see that your recovery is massively reduced whenever you drink a lot of alcohol. So 
hard kombuchas, stick to the, the lighter stuff. It's a way better way to live through the holidays. So what I see happening with all of these things is, and, and you've been around in the health industry for a long time, is you know, you make it through, you know, Halloween, then Thanksgiving, then all these holiday parties, then Christmas, then second Christmas or third Christmas, depending on how many families you have. Then you're into New Year's. And all of a sudden, by the time that New Year's rolls around, of course, people are making resolutions to get healthy because really they've lost it over the past few months. You know, weight gain's at an all-time high. Some of the stats are that people's average cholesterol is raised during this time of year more than any other time of the year. More people are diagnosed with heart disease and have heart attacks this time of year than any other time. So there's all these negative health effects that come along with what really should be a great time of year. We're getting together with family. We're celebrating Christ. We're, you know, spending time with our loved ones. Like, really, it should be a time of joy and health. But all too often, that goes the other way. And in our society, we often get caught up in like keeping up with the Joneses, mm -hmm. uh, overspending for oh. gifts. Yeah. Um, and we just overdo n nearly every part of the experience, but we should give more hugs and give more kisses and um, just enjoy the social aspect and try the foods, but not overindulge. Yeah. Yeah, less gifts, more hugs. Yeah, more hugs. I actually got a t-shirt somewhere. So let's talk solutions and really help give some of the people who are watching this some action steps for getting healthier overall. You know, the first thing is if you're a patient in our office or if you're watching this online, we always do a workshop that leads into the holidays. Um, the one that we're doing this year is on inflammation. That's really what all of this boils down to is this causes stress in your body, which is termed inflammation. So inflammation plays a huge role in causing disease in every measurable facet of your life. It's from a diabetes standpoint, from heart disease, from cancer risk, from obesity, from weight loss resistance, pain, arthritis, headaches, migraines, you name it. Inflammation really is the underlying factor that causes all of those things to progress. And so on December 6th, we're going to be doing an hour long workshop at our office going through the big hitters, the ways to lower inflammation, improve your digestion, improve your overall immunity so that you thrive through the holidays. So if you're watching and listening and saying, you know, I really need more than just a, uh, fun podcast I need to yeah. come and really dig in that's what that's yeah because the right um, one of our patients is a top level researcher in the northern part of the state he lives near our office spends all week up there he commented to me about one of the videos we had playing in the office he's like you guys do good research and I was like hey thanks and he's like inflammation that's it he tests tissue cancerous tissue okay and ultimately every Every time he comes in, I'm like, all right, what's going on? He's like, same thing, man, inflammation. So we have to reduce that. And it's nearly all of it is based on our choices. Yeah. But if you don't know the pitfalls, you tend to, to fall in those craters and we're going to help you. Yeah. So let's get into that. So, so the holiday stress reducing tips, what are the biggest, you know, factors we can do, the nuggets that if we implement these will help reduce our stress, reduce our inflammation. Important. Okay, so I'm gonna go through just some, some quick hitters. Go they, at it. Nearly everyone knows what these are, but these are just, you have to keep your exercise regimen going. Right. It's a natural endorphin release. I doubt totally. that anyone who's completed any sort of walk or fitness routine or cycling ever says to themselves after, like, man, I wish I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Like it's gonna help you to feel good. Absolutely. Can I give you a study on that? So, yeah. so this is a new research study just came out. People who sweat five times a week, five times a week lowers your risk of getting a respiratory infection by 43%. There's not a drug on the market that does that. You yeah, know what I mean? That's a ton. 43. Yeah. So exercise is wholeheartedly vital to being obviously healthy overall. And it's based on your, your, your lifestyle, your age, a lot of factors. So whether it's a walk, or it's a high intensity interval training workout mm -hmm. or cycling. I mean, obviously uh, the patients in our office that love to swim are really excited about the winter because um, <laughs> they can swim in a climate controlled temperature pool that, that they love. But um, another thing is just, although it is colder in most of the country, spending just time outdoors to breathe in good oxygen. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a short hike or, or just observing observing nature makes you feel really good uh and take a take a journal with you write some things down uh, on a with a pen and a piece of paper not not on your on your phone yeah real quick on that too so inside during the winter like we lack the proper ventilation right 
So this is when the air inside of our home starts to really fill with toxins from off gases, from the chemicals we have in our furniture and things like that. So getting outside is a great way to actually improve your overall lung and respiratory health. So that and just overall good nutrition, like eating good, clean fats, good, clean proteins, mm -hmm. um, the good, long um, burning carbohydrates, um, you know, like um, sweet potatoes, things like that. Yeah. Just the cleaning up your diet because you're going to maybe take a step backwards um, mm -hmm. when you go visit family and friends, but don't, don't fuss at yourself so much about it because that's just going to create stress too. You don't have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And the one topic I do want to talk about is eating chocolate. Cool. Because that's really the basis of this entire three month thing is everything's around chocolate, yeah, everything's right? Around chocolate. <laughs> now, chocolate good, but your next question should be like, well, what kind? Right. Because um, chocolate content. isn't just always content healthy. Yes. yes. Same thing with uh, good quality meats. It's like, okay, well, what does that really involve? Yeah. Like, what should I be doing? What's my option? We know through research that dark chocolate, again, dark chocolate with high cacao content, mm -hmm. minimum of 70%, you start there, work your way up. You look on the label, you want to see as few ingredients as you can get. So like, just think of a chocolate bar, but it shouldn't be one that you just pick up. You got to look at the label because they're going to trick you. 100%. Because they want you to pick that bar. They yeah. got great labeling, fancy fonts on there. Well, um, it's awful because chocolate is actually one of the highest antioxidant foods on the planet. More nutrient yes. dense than almost anything else. But we tend to think that that applies to all of them, but it doesn't. Because really to be called chocolate, it only has to contain 10% cacao. So something can have 10% cacao fillers and 90% of it by weight is sugar. And all of a sudden it's, oh, it's chocolate, so therefore it's healthy. Yeah, so the brief uh, research I did, definitely dark chocolate has a high antioxidant profile. It fights free radical damage. So you have these free radicals that are running around in our body and high antioxidants that are found in like in fruit mm -hmm. are also found in dark chocolate. Overall, just a positive impact on cardiovascular health because okay. those the good compounds in dark chocolate are going to improve um, blood flow. So just comparing a couple studies. So 2014 study was looking at um, an effective way at reducing stress. And they just compared dark chocolate with white chocolate. 2020 study, this was about memory. They tested uh, folks to basically retrieve verbal memory cues. Which do you think won, dark chocolate or white chocolate? Dark again. Um, it basically um, was then led them to do another study about just cognitive function. People who ate dark chocolate. Dark chocolate. It's all about the flavonoids, the compounds in the dark chocolate. Right. And, I mean, nearly everyone likes chocolate, but just make the, the good choice, right? Uh, and another thing that was like a side note, that um, the rats tended to just consume less food when they were part of the dark chocolate consumption group. So it's a, it, it like, I, I guess it satiated them and they yeah. didn't, they didn't overeat. Well, a lot of the sugary bad foods that we have, like during the holidays, it's the perfect storm. Harvard researchers did a study where they found out the worst food in the world. Any idea what it was? Um, I would say bread. Close. Potato chips. Oh. And the reason why is because they... From a caloric standpoint, have tons of calories, but from a nutrient standpoint, they have next to nothing. So they actually never leave you satiated. The problem with the potato chip is it's all fat, really unhealthy fat, carbohydrates, and nothing else. So you can eat a whole bag and still not feel satiated because it doesn't actually have any quality to it. You know what I mean? You remember there was that that uh, that verbiage on some chip years ago. It was like a warning because it had such bad oil. Oh, Olean. Yes. Terrible. I know. Just ran right through you because you couldn't eat the whole bag or else you'd... Beware. You'd be sitting on the toilet for the Beware. rest of the day. Beware. Yeah. So, um, so let's get into it. So, so more chocolate, better nutrition, exercising and finding those excuses to exercise whenever possible. So my thought is the rule around the holidays is you've got to try to move and do a workout once a day, whether that's rolling out of bed at night and doing, you know, 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups, 50 back extensions, or you know, having an excuse with your family that when well, the turkey's in the oven, we're all gonna go do a workout, we're gonna play a turkey bowl outside, whatever it is, like having that excuse to get there. 
Um, but I think that there's also something on timing of your eating as well. So a lot of times we might be in an area where we tend to overeat, um, whether that's on Thanksgiving Day or Christmas Day or around that time. One of the things that I love to bring back into a lot of my protocols, which I pretty much do out throughout the year, but is, is focusing on fasting as well throughout the holidays. So sometimes we'll have just like a really big dinner and we're stuffed. I don't want people to ever feel like you have to then eat the next meal yeah. if you're still full. It's you know okay. what I mean? It's, it's all right. Yeah. You know, so um, my wife and I, we took a vacation and there were all these cool restaurants that we wanted to try. So we literally visited in a day, like three or four different places and just had little snacks at each of them. You know, the, that night we were like, oh my gosh, we, we way overdid it. Like the food was great. We way over ate. And so, I mean, we both just looked at each other and said, hey, why don't we just fast tomorrow? So we like finished eating, I think our last dinner at 8 p.m., went home, went to bed, fasted the next day, literally until dinner the next day. And we were honestly, we were fine overall, mm -hmm. but that gave our bodies a good chance to reset, yeah, to reset. clear the food out of our system. And again, after 12 hours of fasting, you're increasing immunity, you're helping your body fight off, you know. So use that as a tool here. Let's say you have a really big meal. Hey, I'm gonna lay off the food for the next 16 or 24 hours. Simple way of doing it, just shutting off the caloric intake so your body mm -hmm. can reset and get back to where it was. Yeah, and you're not talking about a 100% fast or just a water fast. I mean, you're still drinking tea or a cup of coffee. Yeah, you're just you making little things. really good choices with, with how you sweeten it. One of the things you have to realize is what happens to our blood sugar during this time. You know, when we're eating constant meals like that, we're causing these massive spikes in our blood sugar. And we know that long-term, those chronic spikes and valleys in blood sugar are what lead to diabetes. And one of the things we know are the, some of the biggest predictors of a long, healthy life. People who have more erratic shifts in their blood sugar from eating giant boluses of meals that shoot their insulin way up and then let it fall and crash. We have more mood problems, we have more heart disease, more cancer, more diabetes. So using fasting, also watching what you eat and trying not to overdo the carbs, but fasting really helps to balance out those blood sugar spikes and valleys. Yeah, and get if, you, your body if you're gonna consume some sort of thing that you want to sweet, utilize the choices that are available now, I, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, I couldn't even imagine if there was I can't remember an option. Sweeteners that were uh, made from monk fruit or from stevia. Those are the two go-tos I would recommend. Absolutely. So just to tie a bow around the dark yes. chocolate option yes. is there's a great company called Lacanto who okay, utilizes great. monk yeah. fruit as their main source, uh, yeah. main source of sweetener. And yeah. they have maple and syrup. We use Lily's chocolate. too. Yeah. They use Lily's the stevia. Awesome. Stevia sweetener. So. so you just turn that around and, and look at what the chocolate is sweetened with. And if it's monk fruit or stevia, you're typically good to go. Yeah. I would avoid the ones with dozens of ingredients in it. Yeah. It should be pretty straightforward. So let's talk about this for a second. So we've gone through kind of the, the whole idea of the lifestyle changes, right? Eating, exercising, detoxing, you know, lots of fluids and waters, staying moving throughout the holidays. This, I think, will be one of the harshest, what I would call, quote unquote, cold and flu seasons that we'll have. And I think the reason why is we've spent largely the last three or four years with less human contact than we have in years past for obvious reasons, right? So as we come back together, we're now spreading around new viruses, new bacteria, all of those things to really kind of rebuild our microbiome, you know, our, our bacterial profile and viral profile inside of our body. So I think it goes without saying that this year expects some sniffles, some fights, <laughs> yeah, some sure. restrengthening of your immune system. And I was reading research the other day that talked about, uh, it was a warning um, that a physician's research organization put out against cough syrup. That basically parents are giving their kids way too much cough syrup and it's making those kids hospitalized. Oftentimes those cough syrups have medications in them. They have, they have little drugs in them. Yeah. And when you take them, they can cause respiratory distress, they can cause cardiac arrhythmias, all of those things. And so what I wanted to talk for a minute about was just how to equip your home kind of health and medicine cabinet, so to speak, so that you have the right tools to help your kids fight the cause of the infections and not just mitigate or manage the symptoms temporarily. Because I have a big problem when it comes to taking cough syrup excessively, because if you have an upper respiratory infection, for example, do you think that there's a good reason that your body's coughing? Yeah, it's trying to get something out of your lungs. Yeah, absolutely. So if, so if you're mitigating that, you know what I mean, and you're stopping your, yourself from coughing, we know this, that can cause the infection to delay itself and to last longer. So nobody likes coughing and, and breaking up phlegm, you know what I mean? But there's times when you need to do that and work on it. Help that 
individual's body to work better regarding immune function oh, for would sure. then allow them to fight off the bug. Absolutely. And, a and then a lesser chance of the symptom being there, but it's simply because they have this like armor around them, this immune system that's actually robust. Absolutely. So let's let's kick it off with um, some of the things you're thinking about. Yeah. So so there, some of the ones we already know, we talk about these a lot. Just to hit them just briefly, vitamin D is one. It's over there if you want to hold it up. Um, vitamin D is one because, you know, vitamin D helps directly activate our immune system. So deficiency in vitamin D is very common, obviously, during this time of year. We synthesize vitamin D for sunlight and sun's gone, you know, for the next four or five months, at least not to a level that can actually increase our vitamin D levels. So low vitamin D levels are what lead to this seasonal affective disorder, depression, but it also lowers our immune system. So taking vitamin D or having it available, extremely important. I think the average adult should take 5,000 IUs a day. If you're deficient in vitamin D, you can do a simple lab test that we offer in our office for, I think it's around $50. You can test your vitamin D. Uh, but if you're deficient, that's one thing you really want to work on. Yeah, the one we have is 5,000 mm -hmm. IUs. Now, a good for, for the educated um, out there, they're probably thinking, well, I've heard or read that I need to take vitamin K with vitamin D3. Yeah. However, however that's true, it makes more sense that you look at where is vitamin K really produced? It's produced in the gut. Mm -hmm. So ours doesn't have vitamin K in it. Ours has a probiotic. The goal is to help your gut produce what it should be. Correct. Therefore, closer to the natural way of things. Yes. Not just giving your body something from the outside in that it's not getting. It's it's helping it to actually produce it. Yeah. So that's why I love ours. Yeah. Yeah. Probiotic over K2 all day because a probiotic produces more K2 and helps your body do it. So I, I, I love the idea that said this. Someone said this to me and they said, try to avoid taking what your body's capable of making. So you want to help your body make the things that it can, or you want to take the things your body can't, but don't give your body the things that it already has. You know, testosterone, hormones, for an example, if your body can make it, do the right things so your body can make it rather than just taking the artificial form of it because now your body doesn't have to work for it. And you want to tell your body to work to do certain things. That's what builds long, robust health. A vitamin D test is pretty straightforward. Very straightforward. To even know if you need to be supplementing. Very straightforward. I think the cost for our vitamin D testing is $52. You can get a local lab to run a vitamin D test and we can run it in our office. Super simple, easy way to start looking at where your body is. Okay. So I just took a sip of my vitamin C powder. Beautiful. It really tastes amazing. Yeah. Um, which is great whenever it tastes really good and it's really good for your body. But yeah, for sure. That would be the second one. Yeah, vitamin C, super powerful antioxidant. So it helps reduce stress levels inside of your body. That's what most of us associate it with as being an antioxidant. But it, one of the other things that's great with vitamin C is it actually helps with gut motility. So around the holidays, you're putting a lot of stress maybe on your digestive tract. So using vitamin C or something like a digestive enzyme, if you're going to be eating lots of food, can help your body break that down so you don't have extra, you know, ridding stuff in your gut that can spoil or cause bacterial overgrowth, lead to bloating, lead to weight gain, all of those things. So I think vitamin C is a really potent thing to use for that specifically. And vitamin D also, or vitamin C also helps improve your body's immune system as well. Very similar to how vitamin uh, D works. C, D, zinc are the real big three immune system helpers that we, that we know yeah, of. Yeah, trifecta. So zinc as well, we just talked about it. That's what helps stop a viral replication. So um, zinc stops your viruses in your body if you have a viral infection from being able to reproduce. So that's why it helps with viral infections. And then the last one, I think we've talked about this a lot, but if you haven't heard about it before, um, pro-NAC, mm -hmm. which is also known as N-acetylcysteine. There's nothing called NAC, but um, it's cysteine, which is a... Yes which is a, an essential, a non-essential amino acid, meaning your body can produce it given the right conditions. But what commonly happens is NAC is our body's rate limiting step for making something called glutathione, which is our body's most potent antioxidant. So whenever we're sick, whenever we're fighting something off, our liver kind of rids itself of cysteine because it's using it to make glutathione to fight things off. So once our body becomes depleted of cysteine, that's when we get a lot more sinus, nasal, mucus production. N-acetylcysteine is a natural mucolytic, so it helps to break down that excessive mucus production inside of your body, helps to calm that down, and it helps to arm your liver so it can fight off all the ex extra, you know, bacteria and viruses that go on in there. So one of my favorite things. So the one we have here cabinet. is a capsule, but I know recently we've had, you know, a handful of kiddos in the office that have the sniffles, and the recommendation yeah. for that 
Yeah. Pop it open. Pop open the capsule. Yeah. It's, it's relatively easy and make it a third of the dosage or a half. Yeah, roughly somewhere and there. And it's, it's just, again, a high level um, compound to help with antioxidant production. It's going to it's gonna help that little that little boy or girl to yeah. heal. We've, we've helped a ton of kids with it who come in, sinus sniffles. We get them adjusted. We help boost their immune system with this along with that right behind it. Helps a ton. Now, you're not usually going to find this in a powdered form, and here's why. Yeah. Uh, N-acetylcysteine is a sulfurated uh, amino acid. So sulfur is the, the element that gives eggs that rotten smell. Yeah. So you really don't want to go buy the powder of it. We used to sell this in powder form, and <laughs> no one wanted to buy any of it because yeah, it they were like, I think this has gone bad. No, that's what it's supposed to smell like. Yeah. You know. So those are all great things to have in your arsenal. Again, it's using these things... Um, from a from a preventative standpoint, but then also, you know, if you're coming down with things, you know, we all want to arm ourselves then. That's when we're actually actively looking for these. Make sure you have these in your arsenal so that during the winter, you know, something comes down with something, you can really hyperdose vitamins, rest, get your body what it needs so you can recover more quickly. Using um, a silver spray for your throat yeah. or food-grade hydrogen peroxide as a gargle for your throat really helps to ultimately you're killing that bacteria you're helping your body to kill and the mindset behind this too is this is like sometimes we think that that symptoms are a bad thing and i know that this is a hard thing to fight for some people but you actually need those symptoms to fight things off that's your body's antibody mediated immune system so when people tell me they never get sick i don't believe them because that's how your body actually arms its defenses mm -hmm. that's the way that it kills things off so you know short duration times when our body is expressing health, which I like to call it, yeah, right. expressing symptoms, that's a good thing. That means our body is actually working to fight things off. It's now, like your body's you're, giving you data. Exactly. Yeah. If you're it's getting sick, if you're getting sick yeah. every single week, now we've got more of a problem, but right. our body is meant to express health in those ways. You show me the person that never gets sick. I'm showing you the person who's actually really, really sick on the yeah. inside because yeah. their immune system is non-responsive to pathogens. Yeah. You actually need that overall okay the last thing we'll talk about i don't have it with me but is is a silver spray mm -hmm. um love using a um an emulsified silver spray and the reason silver helps a lot is because it helps to kill harmful bacterium and there's been research showing that it can kill bacterium inside of your esophageal and upper digestive tract as well as in the lining of your gut so it kills ba damaging bacteria, mostly gram-negative bacteria, and it actually helps to salvage the good bacteria inside of the body. So, you know, in certain cases, rather than using an antibiotic, you can use a silver spray that helps more do a targeted killing of the bad bacteria while saving the good ones mm -hmm. as well, okay? So as we go through this, the last thing I want to talk about is the importance of getting adjusted, of taking care of your body, taking care of the frame, taking care of your nervous system as well. Because I think all too often around this time, when stress starts to come on, and we know this through data, people stop taking care of themselves. And, and it's sad because we, we put the emphasis on other things that are probably not as important as our health. We miss more doctor's visits. We're not doing the right things that build health in general. And sometimes for people, that means adjustments. And, and in all honesty, I'd say if you're a patient listening in our office or if you're watching online, this is one of the most important times, bar none, to work on keeping your body well aligned keeping it well adjusted and keeping it moving in the right direction, okay? So I think there's uh, three main things to consider with this. Number one is that when you get adjusted, it helps boost your overall immune system. There was a research study done and I know you probably know a lot of them as well, but people right after an adjustment see a 20% increase in white blood cell production. So this How did they figure that increase. out? So they literally they test their blood right yeah, before and after. Yeah, just do the blood test. Yeah, so my, one, of, one of my best friends actually, he's a chiropractor in New Jersey. He has a blood lab in his office. So, um, oh, wow. so, yeah, so he, he actually put out a study of his current patients and literally documented it and, and faxed me all the pages of it. And he's like, before, after, before, after. Mm -hmm. People going from 8 to 10, 8 to 10.5, 6 to 8. Massive increases in white blood cells for 24 to 48 hours after adjustments. So you can see a direct correlation between, again, getting adjusted and taking care of your body and allowing your immune system to activate like it should. Next thing, and this is something that a lot of us struggle with, is, is mood and seasonal affective disorder and depression. Well, when we get adjusted, this helps to our body to release tons of endorphins. You know, it gets us moving better, which helps us feel better. And when we feel better, that's really how we can do all the things we want to do. You take someone who feels lethargic, they're in pain, they don't feel well, take that person and tell them, go exercise, go eat healthy, go run a couple miles. Mm -hmm. We don't want to, we don't have that motivation to, but when we feel good on the inside and the outside, it helps our body function well. And the last thing is, I think we send them to sit more during this time than anything else. So getting adjusted helps undo the effects 
of chronic sitting, mm -hmm. of being sedentary for too long. Yeah, watching a lot of ball games, things yeah. like that. Sitting yeah, the, at the table. Yeah, I could see that for sure. Those are the things that kind of force our body to degenerate. Again, you know, health is not a, a finish line. This is a journey that we're all on together. So whatever you lose now, you've got to work on making up for later. So the better thing is just to continually stay ahead of health. The things that build health long term, we do consistently on a daily basis. Brushing our teeth, doing the right habits. We don't stop them because we feel good. We continue those because we know that wellness is based around daily habits. And a big part of that that people miss is taking care of their spine, taking care of their nervous system. Yeah, so just bridging what you were just discussing is it's never too late to get your spine checked. Yes. It's always recommended to get it checked as early in your life as possible because you don't know what you don't know. Yeah, you have the best potential to be healthy when you're young. But whoever's 40 years old out there, 50 years old, 60 years old, it's never too late. And a great example is Rosa. Yeah. She was born in 1939. And when she came in, um, because she was referred by her daughter, who's been a long time patient, you don't ever want to put a limitation on someone. But someone who's in, in her 80s, um, who has things like lower back stiffness, arthritis, hip pain, can't move well, her words, miserable, um, relying on Tylenol like to get through the day, like that's, that's maybe not in the highly successful, okay, this is going to be a slam dunk. If yeah. someone's maybe 15 years old, way easier. Right, right. right. And no one ever grows up expecting to be like that. Yeah, like, exactly. I'm, I'm not right now expecting to be in my 80s and not be healthy because I'm trying to plan for that. But it's years and years of just slow breakdowns that end us up there. Yeah. And, and then about four weeks into care when she says, I don't know what you guys are doing, but I feel amazing. Yeah. I mean, you can't even put a, a number on that with, how that makes you feel zero to a hundred. It's just off the chart. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then when we actually took her x-rays six weeks into care yeah, and her spine, her alignment is better. Yeah. And she's in her eighties. Truly healthier. Her hips are in a better alignment. Her yeah. scoliosis, scoliosis is less. Yes. And she's like, I'm walking. I'm way more. What did she say? It wasn't coordinated, but she's like, I'm just more balanced. Just walking to the mailbox. Her smile was just, oh. Yeah, it's so cool to see it that really quality of life get back. So a thing on that, and, and this is why I love being a chiropractor now, um, but sadly, you know, growing up, I had a sick family. I had an uncle who was in his mid-60s, and he had terrible back problems. And the sad thing was he didn't know what to do to be healthy. He was taking medications that his doctors recommended him. You know, sadly, his doctors told him never to go see a chiropractor. And, and really sadly, he went and saw one once and they never took x-rays and they just kind of pushed on his spine and said, okay, you're all fixed, you're all better now. And so he never got some good insight on how to take care of his spine. Well, he's in his 60s. He drove a truck for, for 30 years. He went to Christmas one year and he was just in tears. I remember this and, and we were all like, what's happening? And he's like, well, my back is so bad. My pain's so bad. I can barely walk. So he ended up um, just after Christmas having spinal surgery in his mm. mid-60s. And he ended up getting an infection in the hospital. He developed a form of cancer after that. And he passed away in his mid-60s. And the sad thing is we've all had family members like that. And for some of us, we're getting healthy now. And one of the encouragements I have is like for our patient who referred Rosalie in, you know what I mean, for Tony. Yeah. Whenever you're there, I encourage people on this, share the, share the wealth. And the wealth is yeah. the knowledge of the five essentials of how to take care of yourself. If you're in our office, if you're taking care of yourself, you probably know more than 95 to 99% of the general populace. So speak up. If you see someone struggling or far from health who's close to you, try to stand in that gap to help them. You know what I mean? There's nothing more valuable for us or for her and her life to see her quality of life improve. I think that's the best gift that we can give each other is to work on being healthier. Not about the alcohol, the sugary treats, all of those things. Mm -hmm. I want a family that's around and that's healthy. And that's the most important thing to me. So just a, as a side note, during the holidays, as this comes up, we're going to be having little gifts of health out in our office. So if you have a friend or family member who's struggling, who's close to you and far from health, you can gift them with exactly that, the gift of health. We're going to have supplement packages available and little evaluation cards that are discounted that you can actually gift people and say, hey, 
go get checked out, go get evaluated. You deserve to be healthy rather than getting you some gift card to Outback Steakhouse, yeah, for right, example. Right. Why don't I give you something that can actually help you get to that next level with your health, which again is the most important asset for all of us is health because without it, you can't do anything. So we started off with Rosalie. Yeah, I love that story. Uh, the other thing is she, she's taking barely any Tylenol now. Like yeah. there are days uh, she does, yes. you know, she does have arthritis in her spine. So when she wakes up, she's a little stiff. Yeah. Um, but she's slowly needing that less and less. Yeah. And then, and then you go on the other side, side of the spectrum. So at the same time that Rosalie started, we had a, a little boy start care in our office, Johnny, 22 months old, comes in. He, um, you know, he had trouble turning his neck at that age, maybe some birthing traumas from a young age, um, lots of sinus congestion problems. A lot of kids, when they're born, if they have any type of birthing complications or they're not getting the right nutrients at birth or they have a leaky gut, um, they start to developing all these mucus, sinus issues, autoimmune conditions. Mm -hmm. And so we started working on him. We started at 22 months, adjusting him, taking care of his spine. He sees lots of doctors because he has health issues and all the doctors noticed because when he came in at first, he couldn't look up with his head. His head was kind of stuck in a down position. At 22 months old, he already has spinal issues and people think it's, you know, not until their 20s or 30s. It, yeah. happens, young. Yeah, it happens young. We just miss it. And um, he's, his, his mom said he went to other doctor's offices and they're already noticing that he's looking better, he's moving better, his mood is better. He's functioning better. Um, we started working on some immune supplements as well, and we're seeing his sinuses clear out and his sinuses are draining more. You know, it's a different kid when we have health. Yeah, that path that he was on, not his choice at all and not his fault. To be able to change the path earlier, I can't wait to watch him grow up. That's going to be awesome. I know, I know. That's going to be awesome. So, so during the holidays, it's, it's about family. It's about health. It's about keeping your priorities where they should be which is in health is your best asset and having family around is the best gift that we could all have. So I encourage you guys, stay healthy throughout the holidays, stay well adjusted, get your family checked, get their spines evaluated, make sure your kids are getting adjusted. Don't skip on doing the things that build health and wholeness long-term. I got one last thing. Um, I watched kind of a coaching video of the day and I thought it was just impactful as something to leave with. It was the thought that everyone in life needs a coach. Yeah. Everyone in life needs someone on their side to work on helping them. So for the past nine years in our office and for the past 20 years for you, we've been helping patients do better with their health. And there's an X factor that comes to getting adjusted and getting taken care of our office, I believe, in that we kind of help you side by side to encourage you through all the hard parts of life. Sometimes we tend to think in life, like, oh, I don't need a coach. Like, I got that. I have a lot of people come up to me sometimes and they say, oh, I was at your seminar. I've heard, I know almost everything you talked about. I've heard that before. And I say, great. Well, the better question is not what have you heard, but what are you implementing? Yeah. Being under care in our office or having us as your health coaches and in a, in a humbly term, being kind of your health mentors is that we're not coaching you for education. We're coaching you for correction. Serena Williams, Tiger Woods, they all have coaches. They're the best athletes in the world. Mm -hmm. They don't need someone to teach them how to be the best athlete in the world. They need someone to help them make sure they're doing the little things right on a daily basis. And that's where value comes in from having a team of people who care about you in your life, whether it's us, whether it's other people, but having those people around has so much value to it. In life, I for years thought that since I was good at sports, since I was smart. I didn't need a coach. And it wasn't until about 10 years ago, I realized that the most impactful people in the world who are the healthiest, smartest, fastest, what have you, they all have multiple, multiple yeah. coaches Can't and coach people every, working every into their life. Exactly. Yeah. So lean into those things that help build health this holiday season. And that's, what's going to make it so that when we're all together again, after the holidays are over, whenever you're ready to get back in health, um, you've already made those strides and done the right things now so that January, February, March, you're making leaps and bounds when everyone else is getting back to, to neutral. So cool. Sounds good. Awesome. Happy holidays, you guys. Happy holidays. Take care.